Man, that's quite a vehicle, isn't it? I mean, say what you like about it, but I mean, that that's it would be cool to have one of those. Even being a librarian, I can appreciate that kind of engineering. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever want to be a rocket rigger, though. It's too dangerous. Never mind the road killers, but there's lots of other kinds of things you got to worry about. Natural disasters, sandstorms. That's dangerous, too, because you've got to deal with the massive winds that come down. They say sometimes the jet stream comes down, touches. I'll take a rig right off the road. Then, don't forget you got the soldiers and weird... I mean, anything can happen to you on the autobahns. So it's you're kind of taking your life in your hands. You get paid. You get paid pretty well, but that all depends. That reminds me. There's a, whenever you have a circumstance like this, there's always your heroes. There's one, there's a few out here who uh, do what they can to try to help out. One of them is a Kulat. Great Kulat. She was uh, a bit of a legend. She is a bit of a legend. Still running around out here, but I haven't heard a Kulat story in a long time. See, Kulat was a... Legend goes that Kulat was this Inuit woman. Young girl. She was about 21, 22. And, uh... The Inuit are, uh... Like an Indian people, I guess. They used to live up along the... Uh, what's called, like, the dew line. Up where the, the ice flows used to be before it all melted. I mean, they were fairly cut off from society. They had a fairly natural way of living. They just, you know hunted their bears and seal and whatnot. They lived like that. The world left them alone. And they left the world alone. But I guess well couldn't leave well enough alone. During the Asian War, there was a series of raids that happened where they moved in on what they thought was American bases. And there was a mix-up. Some of the raids that happened, one of their Kulat's village got flashed. You know, flash is a high-speed military raid. They just go and kill everything. They say that she was a mechanic. She was one of these gifted girls who uh, could do just about anything with machines. Intrinsic understanding of how machines worked. I heard all sorts of stories about native people being able to be in tune with nature and, you know, kind of being able to track and do that sort of thing. But uh, Kulat was that way only with machines, the spirit of machines. Maybe server had touched her too. When her village got flashed, she was working on a car. And before you, you know, anything else happened, there was eruption of gunfire, people dying everywhere. But the Inuit are no slackers. They knew what it was to be attacked. You don't go walking into a snowbound Inuit village with soldiers and snipers and expect to walk away with no casualties. She was just a kid. She All she knew was vehicles, so she just stayed in the grease pit where she was and power got cut, so she stayed in the dark, and essentially what was a trench. The garage got hit with a rocket, and the whole thing collapsed in, but with the car over top she was working on, she was, she was okay. Kind of became her own little bunker. A few hours later, she managed to dig her way out. The village was destroyed. There was nothing left. Every man, woman, and child was killed. And there she was, alone in a village of the dead. Two hours. Unbelievable. So, 
innuit or survivors, every last one of them. To look at her, you wouldn't think she was anything special. She was about, they say she's about five, six, five, seven. Long, jet black hair, straight. Looks kind of Chinese. The Inuit have sort of a Mongolian kind of Chinese look to them. Slender. Very muscular. Beautiful, I suppose. Some could say, but... I mean, when you're dealing with that level of spare, beauty seems to be lost. But the Inuit are survivors. Even when the village got flashed, I mean, everything was heating up. Things were changing. They knew that their way of life was terminating, so they were all taking snaps. She did what she could. She found a car, a snow car. That's what they work on up there. They're like, uh, it's like a, a regular car, but they're hooked up with a kind of uh, tracks so that they can move, across, move over across the ice. Very popular. They hooked them up with rad packs. They started selling them. Anyways, they, uh, She, uh, I guess she cried for a bit and had to survive. I mean, there's no time for grief. So she began to go through the wreckage and through the dead and try to find what she could use. Outside the perimeter of the town, there was a military sniper that had been killed. I guess they got into a duel with an Inuit. Getting into a long-range duel with... An Inuit in the snow with a rifle is a bad idea. But uh, I guess he did, and he lost. Well, I mean, does anyone really win there? But the Inuit had shot him in the head. And since it was an Arctic mission, the uh, soldiers were all wearing Enviro suits. The Enviro suits are a temperature control suit. It uh, fits very tight to the skin. One size fits all, customizable. Very, very useful based upon sort of height. It's, they say one size fits all, but that means to your musculature and measurements. I mean, you have to small, medium, large, extra large, but just so happens the sniper that got killed would. Well. About the same size as she was. So she stripped off his virus suit in order to keep herself alive. I mean, that was state-of-the-art equipment. Thousands of dollars for one of these things. She'd never seen one before, but she kind of figured out what it did by looking at it. I mean, they're pretty wild to look at. It looks like uh, hiker, hyper-compressed motorcycle armor, only you know, skin-tight with padding and pockets. Pretty wild. And nature she had that made her able to understand machines and the way things worked was the greatest gift that anything could have given her. So she suited up, grabbed all the supplies she could, and headed south. Interesting thing about the Inuit is that they have a layer of fat on their body that uh, no other human on earth has. They're able to extend extreme temperatures of cold, unbelievable temperatures of cold. But conversely, they can't take the heat very well. So there's not many Inuit left. Most of them are dead. But uh, because Culad had that virus suit, she can set the temperature at whatever she likes. So she set the temperature nice and instead of being set especially warm, she said, too, especially cool. Keeps her body that way. Comfortable operating range. They say she drove south for a few weeks and wound up scavenging what she could, coming across what she could. There's lots of military bases that are abandoned, especially in the deserts. I mean, as the <laughs> as the wars raged and bases became outmanned. They just left all their equipment and walked. Good military tradition. She came across a few. There's one in particular she came across. It was uh, outfitting for desert patrol. She got a lot of good equipment there. And that was where she uh, built 
the Uranamacht.